he was wounded so we could be healed. So it was his wounding, okay, his pain, his punishment, so that we can receive our healing. And this is what's so crazy to me. Millions of believers around the world, they don't understand that there is a healing aspect to the atonement. There is a physical aspect, a physical element. I'm talking physical now. A physical element to what Jesus did on the cross. Isaiah 53, 4 says, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. So he took on our physical pain. So write this down. Jesus was wounded physically so that we can be healed physically. This is why he did this, so that you can be healed. So this is why I have odds with people that don't believe in healing, because I'm saying you're not giving Jesus full credit and full reward from the work he did on the cross when you don't believe in miraculous healing. Now, Isaiah, is this what he meant? I'm gonna show you this is what he meant, because you need to understand when Jesus came, he started his ministry. What did he start doing? He started healing the sick. Not only that, we're gonna see the healing of the sick continue into the book of Acts. People would be miraculously healed by the laying on of hands through the apostles. In verse five of Isaiah 53, and if you don't know, Isaiah 53 is really the chapter that you wanna focus on. The Bible says it was by his stripes or by his wounds that we are healed. So think about that. Jesus dealt with our sickness. He dealt with our pain in his own body. So we don't have to live our lives in pain to cancer. We don't have to live our lives in pain to diabetes. We don't have to live our life in pain to, you know, fibromyalgia or fibrosis or um, things that tear apart the liver or the lung disease or heart disease or blood disease. We don't have to live in pain because Jesus actually took on our pain in his body by the work he did, as I'm losing my voice here, by the work he did on the cross. Now, it's interesting that when the Bible speaks of atonement, it never speaks of healing being in the future. I want you to pay attention to this. The Bible speaks of healing as being finished, okay? It's always past tense. So as, as far as God is concerned, healing has already happened. We are already healed. Now, Christians will say things like, how do I know if it's God's will to heal me? Or how do I know if God wants to heal me? But that's not the right question to ask. The right question to ask is, how can I receive the healing that God has already provided for me. So if you're sick in body, I wanna tell you tonight, there is healing. We're gonna pray at the end of communion for healing in your body. There's healing afforded you by the work that Jesus did on the cross. Now, if you don't believe that God has provided healing in the first place, then you're likely not going to see healing or appropriate it. I and mean, this goes back to all the guys that don't pray for the sick, that don't believe in divine healing. And they say like, if God would wanna do it, he can just do it. You have to understand you're not going to see something that you don't believe in. You're not going to see something that you are have unbelief or you deny. And so the world says, see it to believe it. The Bible says, believe it to see it. So we have to believe it so that we can see it, not see it so that we can believe it. So if you're wanting to see healing, you need to understand what Jesus did. You need to appropriate it. Jesus over and over would ask people if they believed or he would say, you are healed because of your faith. So don't, don't think you're gonna get divinely healed if you don't even believe in healing. Don't think you're gonna get divinely healed if you don't believe the work that Jesus did on the cross. So understand, it was at the cross that Jesus bore our sickness and bore our disease. So healing is, write this down, always God's will. There's no debating this. If you look at Matthew 8, 16, at the beginning of Jesus's public ministry, here's what it says. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demonized, okay? And he cast out spirits with a word and he healed all those that were sick. So you have to understand that in Jesus's healing ministry, there's no hard distinction between healing and casting out of demons. All throughout Jesus's ministry, you're going to see supernatural healing with the casting out of demons. Why? Because oftentimes, Demons are, sickness is attached to demons. We know that in Luke 13, the woman had a spirit of infirmity. You're also going to see in the gospels, the Bible said they brought the sick to Jesus and Jesus cast demons out of them. Some of them didn't even come for deliverance, but Jesus recognized that their sickness was a demonic spirit. Now, why did Jesus minister in healing and deliverance? In verse 17, it tells us, it says that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, the prophet saying, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. 
So understand that Matthew is going to tell us that Jesus came to heal all that came to him. Not some, but he healed all. Every single person, he says here, Jesus healed. All of them got healed. All through his ministry, you're going to see this happening. Jesus healing people because of what Isaiah said. So if you might be saying, Isaiah, you're preaching Old Testament, Isaiah 53, all that. Number one, the Old Testament is still important, obviously. But number two, this also went into the New Testament. Jesus continued to do this. First Peter, if you're taking notes, 224 says, who himself bore on our sins in his own body on the tree. So in his own body, he bore our sins on the tree that, that we having died to sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes were healed. But I want you to notice this, okay? Peter goes back to Isaiah 53, which I just gave you. And this is what he says. It's not about you, it's about Jesus. So I wanna tell you, if you're dealing with sickness, if you're dealing with disease, if you're dealing with demonic bondage, take the focus off of you and put it on the finished work of the cross. This is what Jesus did, not what you can do. But I want you to notice the verbiage that Peter uses. Peter uses past tense. He doesn't say that you will be healed. He doesn't say we are healed. He says we were healed. Go back and look at this. Go back and look at 1 Peter 2.24. He says, by whose stripes you were healed. Why? Because it's already been done. As far as God is concerned, your healing has already been done. When Jesus said in John 19.30, it is finished, it was finished. So gee, God's not gonna do anything else to add on to the work of the cross. It's not like, oh, 2021 sin is extra bad. I'm gonna add on to what Jesus did on the cross. There's no adding on. There's no Jesus on the cross. And this is the work that Jesus did. And we don't add on to the work that Jesus did on the cross. This is everything that you've ever needed. God has done through the death of Jesus on the cross. So some of us need to stop begging and start becoming believers and start understanding that by his wounds, we were healed, that he took on these wounds in his body so that you can be healed. So I challenge somebody, Start thanking God for healing you even before you're healed. Peter said, you were healed. So say, Lord, even though there's still pain in my body, even though there's still sickness in, my, in the physical, thank you that I've been healed. Thank you that you healed me. Thank you that restore, you restored me. Thank you that Peter says it's past tense, not present, te present tense. And you've healed me. You've restored me. You've delivered me and start praying from victory, not for victory. Start believing God. And this is one of the reasons why we don't believe this is because we've not been taught that the Greek word for salvation is the word sozo. And this literally means physical healing and deliverance from your enemies. So this speaks of healing and deliverance. Salvation directly correlates to being healed and being delivered right now. God wants to do it right now. Not so only when you die, you could just go to heaven, but so that you can live a free life. There are millions of believers in bondage waiting to get delivered when they die. So they say, oh brother, I'm just gonna have to live in sin my whole life. And then one day I'll die and I'll be free from this sinful vessel, the sinful body. So if you have that theology and you don't understand that you can live free from the bondage, what you're telling me, listen to what I'm about to say, you're telling me that death is your savior, not Jesus. Because here's what you're saying. You're saying that once I die, I'm gonna be free from this bondage instead of I could be free right now. Death is not your savior, Jesus is your savior. And Jesus says, now is the day of salvation. Now is the day of sozo. Now is the day of healing, the day of deliverance. Come on, somebody help me preach tonight the day of breakthrough, the day of you getting delivered in your mind, healed in your body. If you have cancer, now is the day to be healed. You don't need to wait for death and say, oh, this is God trying to teach me something. Friend, I can't find in the New Testament God putting sickness on people to teach them a lesson. It's not God's will. God wants to deliver you. God wants to heal you. God wants to save you. You need to understand that in the atonement was healing and deliverance. I just showed you that in the book of Matthew. 2 Timothy 4.18 says, The Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. So this is a promise that we're hearing about how the Lord is going to deliver us. The Lord is going to save us and preserve us. Now, the translation that says preserve, Paul used the word sozo. So Paul is affirming that the Lord is going to save me and keep on saving me. So is 
Salvation in sozo. Absolutely, that's what the word means. So yes, you will go to heaven when you die if you've received salvation, if you put your faith in Jesus and the work that he did on the cross. But also, I think that guys, we're missing out so much of what Jesus wants to do right now. Churches are afraid of healing. Churches are afraid of deliverance. And we need to understand that this is part of the work that Jesus did on the cross. Now, most Christians don't reject salvation. They neglect salvation. Write that down. They don't reject it. They neglect it. They neglect it by only believing the part where they go to heaven, but not the part where the sick is healed and where demons are cast out. Again, excuse me, my voice is gone. And this is equally the work that Jesus did on the cross. In fact, Hebrews 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 3 says, how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. So we must stop ignoring all that salvation has to offer. It's our fault as preachers, because we've taught you that you just need to get saved over and over and over and pray the sinner's prayer and just keep getting saved every week and you don't need to get healed and you don't need to get delivered and you don't need breakthrough and you don't need restoration. Come on, share this broadcast. Just keep getting saved over and over and over and over and that's gonna be fine. But not understanding that that's not the full thing, that we've neglected salvation, not because we didn't pray a prayer, but because we're not demonstrating the supernatural power of God that was afforded on the cross that Jesus did. So we're limiting Jesus. We're limiting to what Jesus can do. The Bible says that he could do only a few miracles in his home city, not because he didn't have the power, but because the people didn't want it. So we need to stop limiting what God can and can't do. And we need to let healing break out. I challenge you pastors listening, let healing break out in your church. Let deliverance break out in your church. Let revival break out in your church. Let signs and wonders break out in your church. Jesus paid the price so that you can be healed, so that you can be delivered. And we need to stop ignoring all that salvation has to offer. We need to stop teaching, just get saved, just get saved, just get saved, just pray a sinner's prayer when salvation is so much more than that according to the scriptures. Now, one of the most practical ways you can appropriate what God has done is just thanking God for what he's done. Saying, thank you, Lord, that through your sacrifice, I've been forgiven, I've been healed, I've been delivered, like we're gonna do tonight in communion, acknowledging the work that Jesus did on the cross, acknowledging that it was only by his death, only by what he did on the cross that you can be saved.